This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Anthony O'Neill, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. It's a free call at 888-825-5225, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. Jeff is with us in Birmingham. Hey, Jeff, how are you? I'm doing well, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up in your world? So uh, my wife and I are currently on baby step three. We have right at three months of expenses saved up. Uh, We have a potential move on our hands. I've got a job opportunity potentially coming up in April and May. And we also, she has a 20-year-old car we're looking to replace. And we just found out two weeks ago she is expecting our first child. Yay! Yeah, we're very excited, but we're just curious. What is your advice on the next step? Should we begin uh, Baby Step 4 yet? Should we hold off and start saving for those things? What, what should we do? Wow. Well, I mean, all, all three of them are predictable events, and so we should save in addition to an emergency fund because they're not really an emergency since they're predictable. Yeah, 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 absolutely. How much do you think it would take you to move, Jeff? Is your job going to give you a moving allowance? It, it potentially will, but I don't know that exact figure yet. So that there is some some cash there that I might be able to get. I think possibly up to about a thousand dollars in moving expenses. Sounds good. I wouldn't worry about the car right now. I, I heard you say you want to uh, go ahead and replace that eventually. I'm not worrying about the car. Um, if I am you, I am moving on to Baby Step Four, and I am starting the the investment process. Uh, but also at the same time, like Dave said, I am going to be focusing on saving for the baby. Um, and then finding out if I am going to get some moving expenses for my company. If not, then yes, you may pause baby step yeah, four so you yeah. can go in ahead and prepare to move uh, because that is a priority. That is a must. Yeah. When you add okay. all three of these things together, what's going to come out of pocket for the move and out of pocket for the baby in particular, mm-hmm. uh, I'd want to make sure you have that Yeah. in addition to your emergency okay. fund but before you move on to baby step four. Uh, but buying the car, I think you can probably save up four to do to do that and that car will make it a little while yeah. it didn't suddenly become old it was already old three months ago before you got all these other pieces of information right so um you know you do want to you do want to again budget to pay cash for it so you don't end up with another stupid car payment right yeah. absolutely absolutely well i will tell you uh this is breaking news we have not told anybody so i'll just let you know you're the first one to know that we're expecting our first child Oh, uh, you should have told, told your parents before you told Anthony. <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to tell the whole world. You know, I'm going to let you know right now. You just told 21 million people, dude. That's it. <laughs> and, well, congratulations. Well, we, are planning, we are planning to do that this weekend. It's just our schedule's not allowed for it. Oh, no. Yeah. You, you, need, you need to call it's, them it's, now. Uh, it's uh, too late. They've already heard it. <laughs> well, congratulations. We're so proud for you, man. That's awesome. And, yeah, uh, so babies first, travel or, or move is second, and... And car is third and depending on your household income how quickly you could pile up enough money to take care of those i might pause a little bit and let's just get ready for a known situation the beautiful thing is is you're actually thinking about all this and doing it intentionally it's not happening to you you're happening to it yes sir and dave i don't have any kids but you do so you know when i have my first child is it safe to say about five to ten grand is a good extra cushion for a baby it depends. Depends on what your insurance is going to cover. Well, uh, it, you know, what, what insurance. health insurance with this company will cover the labor and delivery, right? Uh, and what's his deductible? And does he have an HSA? And okay. you know, what's out of pocket? Um, if you're paying cash for it, yeah, you yeah. would need that. Okay, you'd need 10k probably in today's world. Uh, and 
you know, if you if you do not have insurance for labor and delivery, but most places do nowadays, yeah, and uh, most most policies do, and so, uh, you know, what's your copay? What's your deductible? Okay. And you can calculate and get an estimate what your out of pocket is going to be, not what the total cost is, because that doesn't matter. Gotcha. What matters is what you're going to have to pay, and then, uh, and you got nine months to get ready for that, apparently, yes. or eight, and. Uh, um, uh, then we've got a, you know, we've got a thousand dollars will not move you. Right. And so if you got a five thousand dollar move, you got another four thousand there. Right. And so if you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year, you can do this real quick. If you're making fifty thousand dollars a year, it's you're probably going to take you a few months to get ready for all of these things that are coming at you. Yeah. And that's what you're facing. Way to go, man. Very yeah. cool. Sean is in Pittsburgh. Hey, Sean, how are you? Hi, Dave. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? So four years ago, my wife and I bought a house in Colorado that turned out to be a big mistake because we couldn't afford it. We bought too much house, and we ended up selling it two years later, made about thirty grand profit off of it, and used it to sell to get rid of all the debt we had. And we moved out to West Virginia, where I got a job as a youth pastor, and now that job has kind of ended, and we're looking at moving back to Colorado, and I was wanting to ask you if it would be a good idea um, our plan here, we're thinking about moving in with my parents that live right next to uh, where we work in Colorado remotely right now. We're thinking about moving in with my parents and living there rent free to save up a bunch of money for a little while and then buying a lot of land and then using that land as collateral to get a loan to build a house instead of buy one outright. Because of the market out there, the houses are so expensive. We're like, well, we could probably save a bunch of money and have tons of equity in the house already if we just built one instead of buy one. So, Sean, let me ask you a couple of questions before Dave jumps in here. Uh, you said you're working remotely. So are you no longer pastoring and are you doing, you're doing something else? Yeah. So uh, the, the youth pastoring job I have here is um, I feel like God's calling me on to other things in Colorado okay. to move back there. And so I put in my notice that I'll be leaving in July when my lease is up at our apartment here in West Virginia, and we're okay. going to be moving back to Colorado. And what will you be doing, and how much money will you all be making a year? So um, I will be pursuing a new job to, like, make more income, but right now what we will be making, my wife and I together, will be about um, 60 to 65 a year. Okay, cool. So here's my answer real quick before we go to our commercial break. Uh, no, I don't want you to go back in with your parents. And I, and I don't even want you to get a piece of land. Right now, you need to go ahead and just get a solid foundation. I would go rent an apartment and then follow the baby steps from there. Because it sounds like you don't have three months in your emergency fund already, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so get an apartment, live below your means, and go in the head. Because you said you paid off all your debt. Get your three to six months set aside. Then you and your wife can start looking at land down the road. We don't need to move into your parents' house, skip over baby step three. To go buy a house, you're going to be right back in the situation you are today. So get an apartment, get three months, and you'll be straight. Yeah, that's exactly right. The um, The idea of buying a piece of land and building a house and having a bunch of instant equity, is not, it's not going to work out that way. Um, when you finish building a house, you're going to have almost in it what you would have had had you bought a house. Uh, that's what it costs to build a house. And so you don't get like a 50% discount because you built from the ground up. It doesn't work that way. So, no, I, I think you. I think Anthony's right. You need to get a little apartment and get your jobs and your careers solidified and then start gradually working your way back into home ownership at that point. Um, that's going to be your best bet. Cliff and I joined Christian Healthcare Ministries because we really like the concept of uh, Christians sharing each other's burdens. And we really experienced that firsthand when Cliff was diagnosed with heart disease. It was just such a relief to know that financial burden was going to be taken care of. CHM is the original and longest serving health cost sharing ministry. Get started today and check us out at chministries.org backslash budget.
Anthony O'Neill, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. Thanks for joining us on The Ramsey Show. Emily is with us in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Hi, Emily. Welcome to the show. How can we help? Hi. Um, so my husband and I got married in November, and we've been talking about having a baby, not right this very second, but sometime in the near future. But all these numbers that you see, everyone says it's so expensive, like hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, And I'm a planner. So <laughs> I'm just wondering, how do we decide if we are for financially prepared for a baby? Uh, you are. Yeah, I was about to say, if it's $100,000 to have a baby, Emily, I'm never having a baby. <laughs> no. it, it, those, those numbers are, um, are, are stretched, uh, and they really mostly come into play if you get into uh, a super large family. But if you have a couple of children, the vast majority of your electric bill does not change. Your water bill mm-hmm. changes a little, but not that much. Your food bill will change some, but not that much. The first couple of years, you got some formula and diapers and other things, some mandatory pediatrician bills that uh, come at you and that kind of stuff. Uh, we always joked and said it's mandatory. It's federal law in the first three years of a child's life to pay the pediatrician's Porsche bill. But they, <laughs> they don't really make that much money. The pediatricians don't, but it's still fun to mess with them. But the... Um, uh, yeah, so you're going to have some costs, but the idea that you need to have $200,000 in the bank before you have a child is absolutely ludicrous, no. Or will you realize over the scope of their life that you spent 200000 on them? No, you won't even realize it because it's just like, you know, we get a little bit more macaroni. We get a little bit more uh, another six-pack of Coca-Cola or whatever. I mean, you just whatever it is that the family eats, they're just going to eat it. And so, you know, if you're asking the question out loud, you probably can afford it. Okay. Yeah. Have a baby, Emily. We don't, we do not have, <laughs> have never in the history of Ramsey Solutions told someone to have a child or not have a child based on their financial situation. Yeah. Now, obviously, you want to use common sense and reasonableness. And if you're completely broke and you make $21,000 a year, don't have 16 children. It's a problem, you know, uh, that kind of thing. That's common sense and reasonableness. But, you know, the typical middle class family doesn't have any trouble affording, in air quotes, their children. Yeah. You're going to be just fine. I agree. I, I like that answer, Dave. I'm proud of you on that answer. Well, thanks. <laughs> I feel better about myself. <laughs> but you know what, Dave? I, I, I have said this. So tell me if I'm wrong for saying this. I don't believe in the first six months to a year you should you should have a baby of your marriage. It should be spent with y'all two getting to know each other and figuring out what you're going to do with your life. Yeah, that's not a financial equation, though. Right. That's just a, a space yes, equation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, most couples do that. Yes. Um, but like uh, other couples are uh, really excited to have children. So, I know. Uh, and, and that's okay, too, if you want to do that. I, I We enjoyed a couple of years, like you're talking about, before yeah. Denise came along. And, um, and we've enjoyed every year since she came along as well. So. Yes. Um, uh, and none of them were her fault one way or the other. So that's, you know, that, that's the first baby, right? But right. the, um, but yeah, anytime in any area of your life, money, relationships, anything, you can give yourself margin. Yeah. That's a good thing. Good. Margin's never a bad thing. It, it gives you a little, it kind of smooths out the waves of life a little bit. All right. Milton is in Tampa, Florida. Hi, Milton. How are you? Hi, Dave. Pleasure to speak with you and Anthony this afternoon. Sure. Um, my question. So um, I've been contributing to my 401k for about 28 years now. And just last year, they opted to give us an option of a Roth 401k. So I took that option and I stopped um, contributing to the traditional 401k and started contributing to my Roth. And Good. The match is the same on the Roth. Good. As it was on the traditional. Good. So although although I currently have about a $2 million net worth, I figured... Mm. Anything I can put together tax that grows tax free would benefit me in the long run. You are right. But my but the question is, can I roll over the Roth portion of my four hundred one K into my Roth IRA? Yes. It will be a different okay, so, it will be so, a technically a different account number. Uh, But you can always roll over a your four oh one K to your Roth IRA if you've left the company. Are you still working for the company? Yeah, I'm going to be with the company for about another six to eight yeah, years. Yeah, you can't move a 401k while you still work there. 
Well, no, that's I was just trying to be uh, trying to get ahead of the game here to see if uh, if if I would do that when I did leave. Oh because yeah, yes, I would do I that. Can't... Yes, I would do that. Okay, because I. Okay, because I couldn't see the the, the difference. It, it's one account number, and it shows my 401k and my statement. But right. it isn't broken down as to Roth and traditional. Right. How old are you? I'm 54. How much is in the traditional portion of your 401k? The bulk of it is. I know about, how much. It's about one point about 1.6 million. Okay. I might begin to move some of that into Roth and pay the taxes on it now inside that 401k. Okay. Because it, let's say you move 500000 over and you pay the taxes on 100000 bucks, okay? Or whatever they come out. Yes. Something like that. 100, 100 and a quarter will be your taxes before tax rates go up. And apparently they're going to. Mm-hmm. According to the president, he says he's going to raise taxes, mm-hmm. tax rates. And so uh, on people that have the kind of money you've got. And so uh, before that happens, maybe you move some of it into Roth and go ahead and pay the taxes on it and then let that additional 500 k grow tax-free from this point forward. So so paying that, I wouldn't have – I don't have the hundred and a quarter. I you only do. have about 60. Yeah, I only oh, have okay. about 60. Well, then you don't, you don't need to do it so. then. You don't need to do it. I, I was thinking maybe with that kind of net worth, you had some cash outside of retirement. But um, no, you don't need to do that. But whatever you can afford to move and pay the taxes with cash out of your pocket, I would go ahead and begin to move it inside that 401k to Roth. Now, when you retire, whatever's Roth, you can move to a Roth, and it will be a different account number than your current Roth IRA, but it could be in exactly the same mutual funds as your current one. Okay. But rollovers just don't combine with existing is all technically, but it's just a it's just a fine line. Okay, I appreciate it. Yeah. So very cool, man. You've done great. Congratulations. Did you you, you didn't inherit any of this? It's all 401k money. So you became worth 2 million dollars from the ground up starting with nothing. Way to go. Thank you very much. That's impressive. Very, and 54 years old, worth a couple million dollars. That's exciting to me, Dave. That's how it works. I mean, listen, you can't stop saying you can't be a millionaire. <laughs> Follow the steps. You'll get there. He's not a millionaire. He's a couple of millionaires. That's probably bad grammar, but, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, I think got, we knew what you meant. Yeah. He's a millionaire <laughs> two times over. Right. Yes, sir. There you go. All right. A multi-millionaire. Yes. There we go. That's I like how that's that. working. Good. Yeah, I really do. I Very really do. Cool. Now, let's say, Dave, he did have the cash. Would you even say, hey, go ahead and move the the whole 1.6 over to the Roth if math, he had the cash? Ma- it would be very hard to swallow okay. ma- emotionally, but mathematically, then from this point forward, it Gross. would all grow tax-free. Yes, that's going to work out for him. And because he's going to pay taxes at a higher tax rate later because the tax rates are probably going up. Yeah. If this current president and Congress have their way, and I suspect they will because they all agree on everything. Right. So, um, you know, that it looks like taxes on evil wealthy people are going up. So then mathematically, it makes sense to do it now because you save yourself money if you have the funds to do it. Right. Now, if you just take the money out of the IRA, to, uh, I mean, like reduce the 1.6 balance by enough to pay the taxes. Right. Then it's a wash mathematically uh, because that portion you took out would have grown to enough to pay the taxes anyway. Yes. yes. So you would have been okay. Yes. But yes. you'll come out better off if you've got a 10-year period of time or more to roll if you can pay it out of your pocket. In other words, your baby step seven. Yep. You got extra money later on. He's a multi-millionaire. Now you don't need to fool with that if you're in baby steps two or three or four or five, whatever. And in there, six, you still need to pay off your house first before you talk about that strategy. Yes. But any money you can get out of taxable accounts if you're going to become wealthy, yeah, uh, is going to be a good idea because of that the tax rates are in the political climate appear to be going up. up. Yep. This, this is the Dave Ramsey Show.
debt-free stage in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions. Justin and Heather are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, Dave. Really good. Hey, Anthony. Welcome. Where do you guys live? We live right outside of Memphis, Tennessee in Collierville, Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Just Ooh. about three hours down the road there, yeah. huh? Yeah, that's right. Well, welcome to Nashville. And all the way over here to do your debt-free scream, how much have you paid off? Just around $407,000. Goodness gracious. Whoa! How yeah. long did that take? It took a little over eight years. It took a while. <laughs> okay, that works too. And your range of income during that time? We started off around 140, got up to about 190 for a couple of years, and then we're back down um, around the 140 range again. I went part time. So. Oh, okay. Good for you. Yeah. Well, I'm guessing with this amount and how long it took, it must be you paid off your house. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We did. Look at it, Ooh. weird people. That's right. Paid yes. off. What, is wow. this, what is this paid off house worth? Uh, 360, 370. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all yours. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you two weirdos? Uh, I'm 34, and today's her 35th birthday. Unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. Way to go. Happy birthday. <laughs> Very nice. I like what better this. way to celebrate? Amen. You know? Do a death free yeah. scream, baby. Let's go. I Man. love it. Man, 407,000 in eight years. So tell us the story. How did you get started on this and what happened? Well, um, I went to pharmacy school, so that was a pretty big chunk of the money. That was about $70,000. And he was working at one of your momentum churches during that time, uh, Bellevue Baptist yeah. Church. Oh, yeah. um, and he's, uh, he's a pastor, so he was on staff there. And um, they went through your whole program. Yeah. And he had actually read, I think, total money yeah, makeover I was, before that. I was in a bookstore and saw your face on a book and I was like, all right, I'm going to get it on a whim and just read it. <laughs> in spite of the picture. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, read it in the morning. Just, I think I was around 24 or so at the time. Yeah. And uh, kind of went from there. We've been leading FPU classes and we took our whole church through it last year. Yeah. And yeah. It was just super cool to see um, how God used you guys in our lives, but also in the life of our church because yeah. we didn't know what 2020 was going to bring. Yeah. And we took our whole through church through it through 2019 yeah. and then boom yeah. and it uh, really helped a lot of people yeah pastor and, Gaines is a good man he's a good yeah. friend yeah. Of ours. Yeah. Yeah. and we're at Collierville First Baptist now and they've gone through it as well yeah. so oh wow okay um, but anyway yeah I, I just remember having this distinct memory taking out loans in pharmacy school which I had some help from scholarships but not enough but I remember checking my loan balance and I think I did it like I checked it one day and then I checked it the next day and it had gone up like two or three hundred dollars in one day. And I was like, oh, my gosh, these have to die. Like as soon as I get out of school, like this is just not going to work. Like I'm not going to keep letting this pile up on us. So So how long you guys been married? 13 years almost. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Coming up on 13 this year. So you worked through the student loans and the other dad and then you started on the house. The student loan went by really quick because we just kind of lived on his salary Mm -hmm. um, when I got out. And so we were just able to hit that really hard. So that was like a sprint and that was done. I think that's one of the keys is as you make more money, just be content with what you have. So good. Don't just keep increasing your spending just because you're getting more money. And so we just, that was one of the things that we tried to do. And I got um, Rachel's, uh, the gratitude journal, her contentment journal, Mm -hmm. and just Mm -hmm. trying to to daily remind myself just to be satisfied with what I have and to be content in that. And that kind of helped along her journey too. Yeah, but the house, that was just a marathon, man. That just (laughs) takes a while. To go from the consumer debt to your your mortgage, I mean, consumer debt, I'm pretty sure you you did your savings account three to six months. Yes. Mm -hmm. But then what, why? Like, why did you want to attack the mortgage? I know that's baby set six, but you're young, you're you're in your 30s, you're in your 20s. Like, why? What was the thought process behind that? Well, one of the things when you go through FPU, you go you go through it with people in different life stages. And I saw and heard so many stories of empty nesters who would say, I wish I had this in my 20s and 30s. Yeah. And they were speaking wisdom into our life of saying, if you do this now, you'll be more free later. And that's kind of how I viewed it as not holding my future kind of in chains, but being being fiscally responsible so that in the future I could do whatever the Lord calls me to and I'm not bounded by debt. And so that's kind of helped us Mm -hmm. over the last few months as we've been out of debt is we can now give more to things that we're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and when a water line busts in your house, you're not freaking out Mm because you know, you've prepared for it. So, Mm -hmm. so good. And you can go part time with a house full of kiddos. Yes. That's yes. That's been huge. That's been huge. Yeah. Big lifestyle change. And it's because we've worked the program, honestly. So you've led FPU, you've paid off your home at 34 years old. You've done it all. You're absolute heroes. 
Tell people what the key to getting out of debt is. Uh, again, I would say being content um, and then just sticking with the budget and working the plan. It's kind of a bad plan is better than no plan at all, but this is a good plan. And uh, I always tell people, you know, when it comes to FPU, I'm not a paid salesman. I'm a satisfied customer. And I just tell people, you know, just work it and give it time. And, you know, you say it, it's uh, we're, we're in the crock pot business, not the microwave business. And you know, it's tough. And I would just say, like, if there's anyone out there who maybe you're beginning this kind of whole process, I just want to encourage you because um, it's going to take some time and it's hard, but it's worth it. Yeah. And having been on the tail end of this, yep. just encourage people that it's worth the work. Uh, you're going to be free and you're going to be able to give like never before and you're going to have freedom and it's, it's great. Yeah. So, so over the eight years, what was the hardest thing that you two had to get over? Um, well, you never want to get in the comparison game of comparing yourself to other people yeah. because it, it, even when she was in pharmacy school, uh, there were people yeah. buying like Mercedes yeah. and just taking out more and more loans. And we're yeah. just thinking you are crazy for doing this. <laughs> and, uh, and, and to say, you know, but what I've seen is what's helped us, Anthony, is God has just been so faithful throughout the whole time and he's provided for all of our needs. And I just... I, I'm I'm a believer that when we're faithful to him, uh, he's faithful to us, and you reap what you sow. And so part of it is just sticking with the plan and um, putting your big boy pants on and just getting after it, yeah. and, uh, and it works. It works. You guys were obviously very unified in the process, too. That yeah, I mean, a big difference. I'm the spender, so there were definitely some times when I was not happy about mm -hmm. not being able to do something, but... Um, now you can do anything. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> within reason, but yes. Well, I mean, <laughs> you got no freaking house payment. Yeah. I'm just saying. It's uh, nice. Wow. Yeah. That's so impressive. You guys Thank are amazing. You. Very, Thanks. very well done. And you brought the kiddos with you to do the debt-free scream. What They're are their here. names and ages? Uh, Madeline is our first. She's seven. And Anna Kate is five. Mm -hmm. And little Truman is our uh, COVID baby, he's one. All oh, right, oh, go man. Truman. <laughs> yeah. Matching shirt with dad. That's right, baby. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well done. Well, we got a copy of Chris Hogan's book for you, Everyday Millionaires. That's definitely the next chapter in your story. Thank you for leading financial peace through your church, and thank you for doing this stuff. Absolutely. I'm so proud of you guys. Very, very well done. Thanks. All right, Anna Kate, Madeline, and Truman, are you ready to scream? Say yes. Are All you right. ready? All right. We're going to count it down. Justin and Heather from Memphis, Tennessee. 407000 paid off in eight years, making 140 to 190 to 140 House and everything That's at right, 34 baby. years old. <laughs> count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're debt-free! Oh, man, that's perfect. Uh, that young family, and they don't have a house payment. That's going to be so much money in man, 20 years. Listen, making that kind of income, these are definitely millionaires within the next few years. Yeah, you? and they know how to control it, and yes. they've completely reformed yeah. their brains, renewed their minds, as the Bible says. Yes. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Yep. by the renewing of your mind and that's what they did it's absolutely incredible very 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 well done what an inspiration and those little kids man their lives are changed forever oh for sure that's and their kids yeah that's and debt their free kids college. kids yeah. yeah i mean this is uh incredible they're going to be in such a completely different place oh, man. stuff we teach works guys it works it's that simple yeah wow this is the ramsey show
Well, tax season is upon us. I know. Try to contain your excitement. <laughs> Nobody likes doing taxes, especially after a year like 2020. It is a hassle to begin with. But then you go look for help, and these so-called free tax software tools get you knee-deep in the filing process and then sucker punch you with add-on fees and credit card pitches and try to get you a mortgage. Or worse than that, try to sell you a uh, refund loan where they loan you the money for your refund early. Oh, my goodness. And they're too add up the interest rate on that baby. Well, there's a better way to do it. None of those gimmicks. It's simply called Ramsey Smart Tax. This is our team's brand new tax filing software that will help you file with confidence. And with Ramsey Smart Tax, you get upfront pricing at a very inexpensive deal and no tricks and no trades. And if you're a member of Ramsey Plus, you can use Ramsey Smart Tax for free. Wow. Check that out. So text the word tax to 33789. Check out Ramsey Smart Tax by tax texting tax to 33789. Quinn is with us in Denver. Hi, Quinn. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Dave? Better than I deserve. What's up? Hey, so I'm in baby step two. I still owe 80 on my student loans. I started at 120. I paid off 40 last year, making 50. Good for you. Uh, and I have some medical issues. Um, I had like five surgeries uh, when I was going through high school and college in my left knee. And I no longer have cartilage in my left knee. And I need to get these very expensive shots. They're about, you know, $1,000 a shot, one, one a week for three weeks, every nine to 14 months. Um, and I was curious, how do I plan that into my budget? Or do I do the second option my doctor's giving me, which is a $10,000, stem, uh, what is it called, the uh, stem cell mm -hmm. uh, treatment? Um, how do I plan that into, into my budget um, so that I can uh, not be in as much pain as I am walking around? Wow. I'm sorry. That's awful. What do you make? You said 50. You said 50. Yeah, I'm, I make I make around 50. I make a lot of overtime, so I made like 58 in overtime last year. So What do you, what do, you do? I'm an engineering project coordinator for uh, med device and drug R&D company. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you're around this stuff all day long, and then you need some of it, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I mean, it, it, it sounds, I don't know what the, uh, uh, probability of the stem cell is, is that a hundred percent? Does that work all the time or is it just a hope? It's, it's a, it's a, uh, they say it's not fully approved by the insurances yet because they're still doing their, their trials. So, but it, the, the science looks good when I looked at it cause, cause I know how to read those papers. Yeah. But, but I'm saying you know, if you do this, is it a 98% chance you're going to be okay? And never have it's to do like anything else. It's like a seventy-ish percent chance, which is very high. Yeah. In, in in my my understanding of the world. Okay. All right. I, I don't know anything about this. I'm just trying to gauge three thousand dollars shots and pain. Or three thousand dollars shots. Yeah. Three. three th you know. Three one thousand yeah. dollars shots and pain regularly versus ten. Well, it, you break even after three rounds of that, right? Yeah. Uh, and minus the pain, and I'm pretty much a coward, mm -hmm. so I don't like pain. Um, so I'm trying to figure out a way to do that. But you got eighty thousand dollars in student loan debt left. Left. Yeah. Um, hmm. So if you make it one more year without doing this procedure, that's going to cost you three thousand dollars. Right. And it will move further out of the clinicals possibly to become insure, insurance covered, right? Mm -hmm. Possibly. But, you know, these things take, you know, five to ten years. Yeah, unless, you know, it's, a co unless it's a COVID vaccine, then it right. takes about ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's interesting how approvals change on things. But the, uh, yeah, I mean, it could, it, you're very, uh, it could be. Um, Is it serious pain, uh, Quinn? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's rather serious. It, uh, you know, I don't want to walk on it even. You know, minor like minor surgery is what happens painful. to somebody else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, it's all pain. Eh. Yeah. I'm trying to think and what been, I would do in your shoes, knowing that I'm a complete coward and you're hurting. So I'm trying to empathize. I've never had this exact thing, obviously. But um, 
If I'm in that uh, much pain. Sharon did do the stem cell thing, and it did work, but it was a much smaller situation than you've got. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, if I woke up in your shoes, I probably would stop everything and come up with the 10 grand. You would? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The only other thing that comes into my mind is... It is more than interesting to me that you are in that in and around that business. And I wonder if one of your uh, leaders with your current company knows the leaders with the company that provide the other proceed, provide the other stuff and can't get you uh, some help on the pricing. No, I already, I already went down that path. I tried some other things that, that my, my boss knew about that were, um, in development and those those work pretty okay but you know they, they don't last yeah but i'm you just know, saying temporary the uh i guess the is it the actual injection that is so expensive or just the procedure itself the the three shot injection no 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 um, the, the stem cell the i think it's the well as this is explained to me they they take a sample out of my knee, and mm-hmm. then they grow it in a lab in Boston, and then they inject it back into my knee after it's grown, and that all comes around ten thousand dollars. Yeah, and I'm just so, saying the so. company that does all of that should have a friend working inside your company. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm hoping, and I, I'm just going to continue po- poke around on that because it's a ten thousand dollar discussion, and if they knock half off or something because you you pushed around, tried to find one degree of separation here. One of your bosses knows one of the bosses over there, probably. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, and just go, hey, do my guy, do my guy a favor here, man, and um, take care of my guy. In a worst and case scenario, I've made those phone calls for people here, not not medical calls, but right. in other situations where yeah. I go, hey, man, you got that over there? Would you take care of my dude? Yeah, yeah. I'll take care of him, and then I owe you one, right? Yeah. And that's uh, uh, if I can figure that out, it would help speed this up. the cheaper this gets the faster i would do it you know yes. and so the, the uh um uh, but yeah i'm taking care of your knee man yeah. i mean you need to get this done and um i don't like the 70 percent probability but the rest of it i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a try if i'm in your shot in your situation what do you think no i was saying the same thing dave and even right now Have you had a knee done never never yeah okay. never but uh i imagine I, would, I imagine hogan has i'm, I'm pretty sure he has Especially playing football and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, while he's looking at that, I'm I'm starting to save for the worst case scenario. If I got to pay the full ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm gonna build the ten as fast as I can. During yes. that time, I'm gonna work every phone and every connection I can to try yes. to get a better deal. Yeah. Uh, which gets the procedure done that much quicker. Quicker. Yeah. yeah. That, that's that's interesting. Very interesting discussion. Yeah. Sorry, you're <sighs> going through that, man. Yeah. Really. That's just Open insane. phones at triple eight eight two five five two two five. Misty, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Brandon says, "I just started following your baby steps. The largest debt I have is my student loans, a hundred thousand dollars. Should I move this to baby step six since I do not have a home?" No, <laughs> no. What? 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 Huh? I'm confused. Uh, if you, you said student loans, right? Yeah. No, I, I'm sorry, Dave. That threw me. Why would you ask? Well, because it's a huge loan. It's sometimes bigger than a house loan. And so some people often ask us, you know, I want to move it to baby step six just because it's big. No, no. It's it's baby step two, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're not getting rid of Sally Mae, even if she's a big, yes. big Sally Mae. Yes. She's Don't a prolong big, it, ugly man. woman. You know, Don't that's, prolong her. No, that's a, <laughs> get rid she ain't even of ugly. That's just, that's just a nasty. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, yeah. $100,000. 100, the only way it's going to go away is if you attack it, not if you put it off. Right. And so um, we don't move the baby. We don't move the student loans to the, another baby step because of that. It's I've had calls where people said, I got $200,000 in student loans. I owe 60000 on my house. You know, and they want to move it. And I'm just like, no, nope, nope. still don't do it. No, you still got to attack it and get rid of it. Yep. That's the thing. Fun stuff. Good hour, Anthony. Yes, sir. Thanks, James Childs and Kelly in the booth. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. This is The Ramsey Show.
This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Anthony O'Neill, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. We're so glad you're here. The phone number is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Sarah is with us in Lexington, Kentucky. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to the day to the Ramsey Show. How can we help? Hi, Dave and Anthony. I have a little question. I'm debt. My, me and my husband are debt free. We've been debt free for three years. I took a traumatic fall in 2019 and broke my humerus down the flight of stairs and damaged my knee. I've had one knee surgery. And I'm getting ready to have another one. Ouch. Um, the my husband's gone four nights a week and I don't sleep those four nights because all my bedrooms are upstairs. So we're kind of like in a dilemma and he didn't even want to be on Dave Ramsey nine years ago, but now he's turned into a frugal. I think we should sell the house since we have no bedrooms downstairs and buy another house in the next over subdivision. Our house will price at 159 and it's about the highest one in the str- on the two streets. And we could add on to it for like 30000 but then I don't think we could ever get our money back out of it. The houses in the next subdivision are running about 179 but we'll probably only clear like 145 on our house. Now, I have, we have 550000 in 401K, and we have um, our emergency fund, and we have $16,000 because I've been trying to save to, you know, put on another house, 16000 that we could put on the house. But we'll still be a little bit short. What you say your so household think, income is? Our household income during the debt free was eighty four, but since I fell, it's down to sixty five. Because in the last two since two thousand nineteen, I've only worked like four months each year. Because I fell, then they tried to naturally heal, then they did surgery the next year, then now I've had the knee surgery. I'm going to have to have another one. So I'm only working part time. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so you're talking about a a, a one level house. I'm talking about a one-level house, mm-hmm. and I need to stay in my area because I, I'm like the provider for my mother who has cancer. So I need to stay within like a five-mile radius because you know I'm over there every day. So I, you know, I probably could find something cheaper farther away. But then when she calls me in the middle of the night, you know, it's going to take me longer to get to her. Yeah, like so if you I move ten miles away, it'll take you five minutes more. More, yeah. Well, she's kind of panicky on that stuff. Five and minutes? honestly, the house is, well, she gets panicky. I get but panicky. You're they, going back into debt, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we could have it paid off in a year. Well, then save it up. Yeah. And just sleep on the couch for the next year? Because I don't sleep upstairs when he's not there. I, I literally, I, what happened was I got up in the middle of the night. I made a wrong turn. I was disoriented, and I went down the flight of stairs. And I know that that's emotional. We shouldn't I, be emotional. I'm not, I'm not judging your psychological. Th- that's no, not what's you know. yeah. uh, I'm, I'm saying, I what would I do if I were your husband, if I were you in this situation? I completely agree with your desire to move. Yes. And get into a one level. Yes. I've got no issue with that. If you're within one year of doing that with cash then do it with cash or move five minutes further away and do it with cash and okay. deal with a 10 minute drive to mama instead of a five minute drive. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Now the other thing is they make those stair climber things that you sit in. They're 15,000, but no, I don't think no. we can ever get our money back out of that. No. Yeah. Sarah, don't do it. I mean, I, I think you're trying to come up with all kinds of excuses. Listen to what Dave said. You're able to climb the stairs. Yeah. You just don't want to. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm able, but, you know, I've, I've done had one knee surgery, you know, it's like a lot I'm, of times I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm arguing not with kidding. you, you know, I'm and, and let me just tell you how weird I am, okay? Uh, if it's this important to you, I, I would move the living room furniture into the garage <laughs> and move the bedroom into your living room. <laughs> I'm so serious. Well, we well, are from Kentucky. 
<laughs> well, I'm from Tennessee, so I think we got this figured uh, out, we got girl. It figured out. <laughs> listen, this is, here. listen. It's just for a short time, and if it's that big a deal for you to get something that's comfortable, I, I might rearrange something there. Yeah. On that first level, seriously, I'd consider that as a temporary measure. It's not. It's not a five year thing. It's like we're going to go camping for four months and five months till we get this money saved up. But I, I think you can do this with cash if you're careful, or if you'll just make slightly different decisions. Sarah, what you what you really want to do is when you're facing something like this and you've got several very valid things. I want a one bedroom. I mean, I want a one level. I and it's a reasonable request, don't you yes, think? Yes, absolutely. Then, but don't put so many other constraints on it that you can't make your solution true. Yes, like I have to be five minutes from mom instead of ten minutes from mom. Oh no! See, now that one's silly. Yeah. That one's silly. She can be 15 minutes away yeah, from Yeah, and, and still, and go move today. Right. Or sleep in the living room for a year. Yep. Uh, or move your bedroom to the living room for a year. Um, or go into debt and pay it off in a year. But I, I, I don't think that's the way I would do that in this situation. Me, I'm telling my wife, we're going to move away 15 minutes so we can give you what you want right I, now. I'll tell you what the other thing you could do. Uh, you could sell the house today. Uh, absolutely. Rent, rent. And rent oh. a one bedroom. Yep. For a year. Yep. yep now, that's, sure that's even a better plan. It's a, like except that for plan. the move two times part, which I'd rather have a root canal, but the move, because <laughs> the move two times thing's awful. But, uh, but yeah, that, that solves the problem very, uh, and except for have, the two moves. Yeah, but they don't have to move in one year, Dave. They can stay there for, you know, two, three years. And pile up a bunch of cash. Exactly. And get even, even better one bedroom. Exactly. But one level. I keep doing one bedroom. One level, one yeah. level, one level, yeah. It could yeah. be a one level, one bedroom, you know. No, to, to I mean, well, for rent, for yeah. rent. Yeah, just got, that's, that might be your answer. I like that answer, Dave. And uh, like you can move answer. just about anywhere if you're renting for right. a short period of time. And she can save within five minutes. Yeah. That, that that might work. That might work. That's another idea. But I think you're so close. If it was going to be five years to solve the problem, I might solve it differently. Yes. But because it's one year to solve the problem, I'm going to figure out a way to push through that. Right. And avoid the debt. Your husband doesn't want to go back in debt. His house and everything's paid off. I can empathize with that. Yeah. And um, also empathize with you hurting and you don't want to make, you know, you don't want to make a wrong turn in the middle of the night and start this pro healing process over again. I have no issue with that at all either. Hey, folks, how do money conversations go with your spouse? Do they end in a battle or are they not happening at all? Guys, you can get on the same page with money. It starts with both of you committing to a budget every month. With a membership to Ramsey Plus, you and your spouse get our premium budgeting tool every dollar connects to your bank and to both your phones so everybody knows what's going on everybody's on the same page we're working and making changes together and uh, with access ramsey with access to ramsey plus courses like budgeting that actually works you'll uh, it learn exactly how to make a budget you can get a free trial to ramsey plus to, to start your free trial, text the word TRIAL to 33789. Text TRIAL to 33789, and you can get a free trial to Ramsey Plus. It includes Financial Peace University, the Baby Steps Tracker, and, of course, the premium version of Every Dollar. Lots of other goodies in there as well. Smart Tax is free right now. Get your taxes done free. Yeah. Wow. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to Blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings.
Anthony O'Neill, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. That means even if you mismeasure or you pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best possible deal. Today's question comes from Terry in Louisiana. She says, my father recently passed away and my mother received $320,000 in life insurance. She is debt free and says she doesn't need the money since she has enough assets to live a comfortable life. I have $120,000 in student loans that that she wants to pay off for me because she feels like this is what my dad would want. I want I have started following your baby steps and have been gazelle intense for the last six months attacking my dad. This would get me very close to being debt free. I want to honor my father and never be in debt. I am feeling torn about this. Do I accept the gift? Yes, I really do. I mean, I I would definitely have a conversation with my mom and make sure she doesn't feel that you're trying to force her into it. Uh, But I agree. If it it was my daughter um, and I passed away and left this, I, I would definitely want the money to help my family proceed forward in life and paying off the debt will be a good steward in my opinion of that as long as your mom is taken care of yeah that's what i'm concerned about the yeah. reason i'm concerned about it is you didn't tell us that she has how much money she's got you just said she has enough to live a comfortable life right right and um some moms, a comfortable life is a can of soup a day. That's good. If her daughter gets all the money and she barely makes it by because she's broke. Yeah, good point. And she calls that a comfortable life, but she took care of her daughter. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what a comfortable life in air quotes mm-hmm. means. If it means she's got a million dollars in a 401k and this is an extra 320 on top of that, I'll go with that. Yeah. If it means she can live off of her social security and be struggling no at 1200 bucks a month right and calls that comfortable so you can have this money yeah and eh, wrong answer right no so I, I i need a better definition of comfortable life but uh if she if she you know uh, has enough assets to live a con so she has some assets so mm-hmm. it's not social security but uh, you know what is the what's really there that's what i want to know yeah i agree and uh but you know, the more money mom has, the more I go with your answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would definitely accept it. Now, the other piece of this is you cannot give someone that much money without a gift tax being imposed unless you do it properly. Mm. And so you need to see, your mom needs to see a tax attorney or a tax professional to help her file what's called the Unified Estate tax credit exemption and she needs to use up some of her estate to avoid paying taxes on this because if she gives you more than fifteen thousand dollars she's going to be taxed at 55 percent and so do not just write somebody a check in your family for one hundred twenty thousand dollars the irs comes in and audits you you're going to get hammered and so you need to have some professional tax guidance, and it's a very simple form, and it's called the Unified Estate Tax Credit. And you need to do that to avoid the gift tax if you guys go forward with this. And we only go forward with this if mom's definition of comfortable is really comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. Really, really, really comfortable. Yeah. Tracy is in Tacoma, Washington. Hi, Tracy. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Longtime listener and fan. Thanks for my call. For taking my call. Sure. How can we help? All righty. So my husband and I owe one hundred sixty thousand on our house, and we currently have a hundred thousand dollars cash. So we thought about refinancing, but our previous loan person said it's best to do a credit union loan as rates would be lower, and you don't have to pay closing. So right. it'll only be like a sixty thousand dollars loan. They're right. So I was wondering what you would do. They gave me like a ton of different options. It's pretty overwhelming, and. Just as a side note, my husband has MS, so we have, you know, our six-month fund and everything like that. So we're just trying to get our monthly payments as low as possible in case something was to happen with his diagnosis. He, your husband has what? Uh, multiple sclerosis. Oh, oh, MS. Okay. Yes. I didn't hear you. How long has he had that? Um, about a year. Okay. All right. And what's your household income? 
Um, well, it's about fifty-five thousand after taxes. My husband. Where did the hundred thousand come from? Um, just random family gifts, and then we saved uh, a lot. You've done well. <laughs> so, You've done very well. Thanks. And you're a hundred percent debt-free except your home. Correct. Your Correct. loan officer is giving you excellent advice. Absolutely. Okay, good. Let me walk you through a couple of things to watch for. Okay. When a credit union or a local bank makes a loan like this, it's a loan they are going to keep at the bank. They're not making it by underwriting guidelines of Fannie Mae or FHA. It's called a portfolio loan. They're going to keep it in their portfolio. Okay. Okay. So it's kind of like a home equity loan in a sense. They're going to keep it there. They're going to keep it there at the bank. Okay, so as long as you know that, then that what that tells you is that whatever rules they want to make up, they can do. (laughs) So this idea that somehow they have to conform to some other guidelines is a bunch of crap. And so here's what you are going to make them do. What's this house worth? Um, It's worth three twenty five. Okay, so a sixty thousand dollar loan. On a three hundred twenty five thousand dollar house is what's known as a no freaking brainer, right? <laughs> Unless you've got horrible credit or you're in bankruptcy, okay? Right. So what you are going to demand is three things. Okay. One is no closing costs mm-hmm. of any kind under any circumstances. Okay. They need to pr- they need to do this to get this loan. Two is a fixed rate. Okay. And three Mm -hmm. is a fixed term. Uh, Do you want a 10-year or a 15-year? Probably a 10 will be fine in this case. But you do not get a traditional home equity loan where the rate floats and thereby the length of time that you're in the loan floats. And some of those even have balloons or calls after three years or five years. Okay. You don't want any of that. You want a 10-year loan that pays off in 10 years that's called a fully amortizing loan at a set rate with no closing costs there is a local bank or credit union that will be happy to make you that loan okay cool you're you're gonna have to push back though because they don't always use their brains at the bank you know that (laughs) (laughs) i do i'm a mom so i'm used to push back yeah so i think i'll be okay (laughs) they're gonna go now you need to get a home equity loan and this is our home equity loan product and i'm going i don't care what your home equity loan product is if you want this loan it's going to be these three things okay perfect well thank you so much dave thank you so much anthony you guys have a great day you too thank you you too. Great job by that loan officer telling him. That's a good loan officer. Told him I, not to make a loan with him. Dave, I was shocked. That's was good. Like, That's wow. good integrity. I like that. Because it's a, a $60,000 home loan mm. with a traditional mortgage is super expensive. Right. And the mortgage companies don't want to screw with it. And they're, they, they're going to run the rate up, number one, if they do screw with it because it's so small. And they're probably going to hit you with a bunch of extra side fees. Uh, that don't need to happen. So when you're making a very, a small loan like that, under seventy five thousand uh, dollars, especially where there's a bunch of equity, yeah, always go to your local credit union, always go to your local bank, and always remember those three things I told you: no closing costs, fixed rate, fully amortizing fixed term. I've I've seen some credit unions, Dave, do it uh, below a hundred thousand. Oh, they will. They'll do a loan. Yeah, yeah. They'll do it. They'll do a loan over, over, over seventy five thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you get seventy five thousand and under, a traditional FHA or Fannie Mae loan becomes unwieldy. Yes. It's very expensive. Got gotcha. you. And most of the most of the mortgage companies don't want to screw with that. Yeah, yeah. But the credit unions will, well, and the you know local bank will, especially in a situation like this. So okay. very, very well done. Good. Good job of that loan officer. That's good stuff. This is the Ramsey Show.
Anthony O'Neill, Ramsey personality, is my co-host, number one best-selling author. The phone number here at The Ramsey Show is 888-825-5225. Kevin is with us in San Diego. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Good, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can we help? So, hey, anyways, uh, I appreciate you guys for taking my call. Um, a little backstory. Uh, I just recently separated from the military. Uh, I did about 10 years. Uh, currently, I'm a full-time student utilizing the uh, post-9-11 GI Bill. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also just recently took a government contracting position full-time in San Diego, which pays about $60,000 annually. Good. Uh, my wife is a uh, registered nurse, but uh, we just had a baby back in January, so she's a stay-at-home mom for now. Uh, anyways, um, my, my question is regarding uh, equity in our mortgage. Uh, we owe about three hundred thousand, uh, and our house is currently worth about four hundred and fifty. Um, my wife and I are almost debt free. We've paid off uh, almost sixty thousand dollars of debt. But my question is, would it be smart to take out about twenty or thirty thousand in equity out of our mortgage to pay off the rest of the debt and possibly upgrade some things in the home? No, it, it, it wouldn't be. That's not a wise move at all. Um, again, and you said the numbers. I want to make sure you're hearing correctly. What's your household income right now? 60. 60 altogether. Okay, cool. And you said you have about $20,000 in debt? Uh, about, yeah, about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not touching the home loan. I'm uh, not the home loan. I'm not touching the equity at all. Um, what I'm doing is I'm trying to come up with a game plan and knock out this $20,000 cash. So, Kevin, thank you for your service. Yeah. Um, your wife is at home with a new baby, and she's standing around inside that house looking and seeing everything that needs to be fixed. Mm-hmm. And that's what started, <laughs> that's what started this conversation. <laughs> It did. I, I came home to a uh, a list of things like. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid I read that right. Oh my gosh! And so, uh, yeah, the answer is no, babe. When you are able to get back to work, we'll be able to do these this list of things after we've gotten out of debt and have our emergency fund in place. Yeah. So um, you cannot borrow your I, way I, into abundance. Yeah. I, I understand. Um, I do receive a housing allowance through the nine uh, the post nine eleven GI bill. And you get that whether you do these repairs or not. Yeah. So instead of taking out, would it be smart just to use that money? No. Uh, no it'd be smart to use that money to get out of debt, like every other piece of money you've got. Yeah. Because you're in baby okay. step two and you're knocking the debt out. You got a brand new baby. We're trying to get out of debt. How much is your housing allowance, Kevin? Um, the housing allowance is about $3,000. But you get that no matter what you, you can do with it, what you want to do with it. Come on, man. Okay. So, so now we're at 78. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. In household income, right? Yeah. Now you added. No, I'm in. sorry. 36. Did you say 3,000? $3, $3,000 a month, right, Kevin? Yeah. 3,000, uh, of housing allowance. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Now we're at $96,000 household income. Now we're out of debt in five months. Yeah. And then you save up and do the repairs. What's the uh, what's the cost on the repairs going to be? Um, rough number is probably around ten thousand dollars. Okay. Oh, yeah. So here's the thing: you have a ninety six thousand dollar income. You need thirty thousand dollars. You should be done with both of these in one year, mm-hmm. without borrowing a dime. Okay. Okay. So um, now what we've got to do uh, is walk through. Hit this. What happens is uh, the, 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 the very few people uh, look at a situation like this and, and, and they're really doing a bunch of math and they're really thinking about how it's going to turn out 15 years from now. They're more thinking about the here and now. Yes. And that's what drives you to ask a question like, do I borrow money to fix up a house while I'm still in debt? Right. And answer to all of it, of course, is no. And the reason we answer the question we did is what helps Kevin and his wife and new baby be in the best place 10 years from today? Not 10 days from today, not 10 months from today, 10 years from today, what is best for you and your family, what is going to put you in the most money situation, and that is to have avoided the debt and paid cash 
for the repairs and have paid off your existing debts. Yes. And that's going to continue to free money up and continue to give you options and continue to do these things. And it's just a normal thing for her to be sitting at home. You know, she's, you know, she's dealing with a human that can't talk back to her all day. <laughs> and so, um, that is highly needy. Yeah. And, uh, and so it's, it's in human nature to walk around and go, well, we need to paint that. We need to fix that. And didn't even notice it before. Come on now. Uh, yeah. And that's just normal. There's yeah. nothing wrong. She didn't do anything wrong, but that's shorter term thinking. And we need to think what's best for this child long term, 10 years, 20 years out. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. And if you put it through that paradigm, that's how Anthony's quick answer, as soon as you asked the question, was no, no, <laughs> <laughs> with no explanation, no. zero, no. not a chance, <laughs> no. All right, Elise is with us in Buffalo, New York. Hi, Elise. How are you? Better than I deserve. How are y'all? Just the same. How can I help? Yes. So um, my question is: Me and my husband are on baby step two right now, and. Um, we're looking uh, to be finished in October, and then, you know, we'll do baby step three, and then we'll start interviewing some smart investor pros. Mm-hmm. And I've read, like, um, Chris Hogan's Retire Inspired and Everyday Millionaire, both um, awesome books. But one of the things I guess I'm thinking is kind of, for us, like, let's, if we're, because we're about 25, and so we're wanting to, uh, like, learn from our smart investor pro, but I mean, would it, if we're the type of people who, like, we're not going to, pull out, you know, our money from retirement. It's just going to sit there from like, you know, 25 to 65 or 70. Would we need to have a smart investor pro for like more than a year or two? If they're just going to be like teaching us, I don't know, like how to do investing, then we'll be able to learn from them and kind of like take it from there. Yeah. Well, you're not paying them a monthly fee anyway, or even a flat fee per year to do your financial planning or something. You're you're basically taking care of your financial planning needs. Yeah. The Smart Investor Pro okay. is in your corner to help you make a purchase were you to do an investment if you needed to, if you needed to do a rollover because one of you changed jobs or something like that, or for advice and on a particular situation. Something comes up and you go, hey, what about this? And so I... Uh, as an example, like you say, I'm, I'm kind of in the rhythm of steadily investing, and I don't have yeah. I don't have some kind of big meeting with them uh, every three weeks or something. If I need something, I call my guy and I say, "Hey," or I send him an email. I say, "Listen, this is what I'm thinking. Got any ideas?" And he'll send me back a few ideas and maybe a few things to purchase that would do that, and then we'll execute that purchase or we won't. Um, you know, I do my backdoor Roth IRAs. I just finished them up the other day uh, for this year. And, uh, um, you know, so I, I have contact with them during that time, but I don't sit and go over my statements with them every year. Uh, they're not that complicated, you know, uh, you can, if you've got questions, but the main thing a smart investor pro does is they're just, in, they're there and available and in your corner and, and you just need to kind of have these professionals at the, um, at the tip of your fingers, at the you know, at the end of an email or the end of a phone call, that can, a text that can get back to you and give you an answer. That's good, Dave. And and you know what's so funny with my financial advisor? I told him I was trying to build my dream home in the next three years, and he's the one who told me, "Hey, instead of parking your money in the savings account, this was two years ago." He said, "Start parking in the in the mutual fund." Then I heard you talk about it. So financial advisors are just good people to go to to get advice for any any situation. Yeah, but you're not. It's not like you're paying. Um, a daycare to watch your kids or something right. I mean this or hiring a full-time governess for your children yeah uh, this is more like uh, someone that gives you parenting advice once a year <laughs> <laughs> that kind of a thing <laughs> yeah so you're, you're you're thinking about it correctly you've got the right ha- mindset about it but they still need to be there available to you
Thank you for joining us, America. Anthony O'Neill is our co-host today, Ramsey Personality, number one best-selling author of the book Debt-Free Degree. You want to go to college and not have any debt? Oh, it can be done. You may not like all the choices. Some of them include hard work on your part, but he will show you exactly how to do that with a debt-free degree. Tony is in Dallas. Hi, Tony. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, good afternoon, Dave and Anthony. Uh, thank you very much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? I do have a question um, regarding my mortgage and the situation I'm in. I'm um, just thinking about kind of the future if I should save up to refinance or just sell the home. Currently on baby step number two. Um, and expecting to hopefully pay that, uh, be out of debt free by the end of this year. Good. Um, but right now we're on a pause because we're expecting the baby boy uh, in the late May. Good for you. Um, but That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so right now the only thing is um, our home, we have a 30-year term FHA loan uh, with even down payment assistance. Um, and so our payment is around 2200 with the income bringing in 5300 uh, so that's our monthly income coming in. Uh, so I know I, I, when I first bought the home, I wasn't into your program or anything like that. A couple months later, that's when I started hearing you, and then I kind of made a uh-oh situation. I realized, you know what, I, I got to live and learn. So now I'm trying to just find the best way of doing going about this mortgage. Tony, is that 5300 gross or net? Uh, that is gross. Oh, so you're bringing in about $4,400 net then. No, 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 net. Sorry. Okay, net. okay, okay. Okay. And you said your your house payment is how much again? Twenty two. Twenty two hundred. So it's close to that. I mean, fifty percent almost. Yeah. But um, we are expected an income increase uh, in August. My uh, my wife is going to complete her teacher certification, so we're going to see her income double. What other debt do you have right now, Tony? Just fourteen thousand dollars of uh, student loan. So what is her income going to be then? What is your total uh, so right household income? Wait a minute, I'm sorry. Let me try this again. What's your total yeah. household income going to be after she gets her certification? So after that, whenever she gets her teaching job, which I think well, we're hoping for August, um, thinking in around 6800 from 6500 to 6800 just depending on the area where she works. Okay. All right. And so that puts you at about 30%. Mm-hmm. Yes. So a little high. And what do you do for a living? Uh, and I work in insurance. In insurance? Yes. So uh, how much do you project your income will go up over the next three years? Uh, over the next three years, hopefully, yeah, right now, which is a good time. I was thinking about getting a part-time job. Uh, but right now, since the storm's hit in Texas, I was thinking, uh, they may pull me aside to do overtime and help out in the claim section of our company. So that's where I kind of what do you do? There. What do you do in the insurance world? Uh, I'm actually a trainer. So I train people how to. Oh, okay. Uh, so you're not you're not selling insurance. So your income's no, not no. following a sales pattern. Okay. No. So <laughs> both of you are going to be getting plus or minus this overtime uh, normal cost of living plus or minus raises, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you're going to be at thirty percent, and dude, you're going to have it tight for a couple of years until it gets down to that twenty five percent because your income continues to go up. I don't think the house is going to kill you because her income is going to add to the thing right now. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, the, the main point of the 25% is if you're going to be there for 10 years, yeah, you're going to struggle yeah. if your house yeah. payment's 50% of your take-home pay. But it's not going to be, but for a matter of months. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking as well. I was just debating on that. Um, I was like, I know it's going to be tight. And I told my wife it's going to be tight a little bit. Yeah. And I get now with the 25% rule of why it is. Yeah. Uh, so, you know. Because you're, feeling the, you're feeling the pinch in your budget right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Let me ask you this question. When you have the baby, is she coming home or is she still going to work? Oh, she's still going to work. Well, good thing right now, we kind of planned it this way. She's having the baby late May. So she's going to have the whole summer off uh, with the baby. And then I do, I get like six weeks paid time off. So I'm going to take the first, probably the whole month of August off while she goes back to work when the new school year comes in. Oh, that's good. That's good. So, yeah. Okay, cool. you got a plan. So the point is, it's not a forever thing. It's for a for now thing. Right. And the other point is for our listeners, we would not have signed you up for this trip, but no. you're going to be okay taking it. Okay. That makes sense? Yes. Yeah. Hey, man, thanks for the call. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Nathan's in Houston. Hi, Nathan. How can we help? 
Hey, Dave and Anthony, thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, I have a question about when it's okay and how much to possibly spend on upgrading my wife's wedding ring. Um, I, I've heard you talk about upgrading vehicles, which are a little bit more practical. Um, and depending on who you ask, this might not, this might be practical, <laughs> but, um, I, so my wife and I are going to celebrate 15 years coming in April Wonderful. and, uh, we're, we're four baby step four, five and six. Okay. Um, and how much would you yeah. spend on the upgrade? That, that's kind of what I was wondering. Um, I was thinking, uh, maybe in the twenty to twenty five thousand dollar range. What's your income? But, uh, like three twenty five mm-hmm. on average. Yeah, and you're going to pay cash for the um, upgrade. Oh, for sure. Yeah, um, that's fine. It's just I, that's okay. fine. I guess. I guess. Put a trigger. I didn't know when. Okay. Yeah. Put a so, it, let's, just, let's just pose uh, it another way. Okay. Let, you remember when they used to have these things called cruises? Right. Yeah. (laughs) Back before the pandemic. I mean, let's say that you for 15 years, you wanted to spend $25,000 cash and go on a cruise, a luxury, luxury, luxury around the world cruise or something. And that was the way you were going to celebrate the 15th. And you had the cash and you make 325 and you're on baby step four. I would say do that. Okay. Yeah. In other words, if you consumed the money and got nothing to show for it, but a memory, which is what travel is, right? Right. And then then I would still say, okay, because you have the money as a ratio of your income. So this is a consumption. Now, what you don't want to do is call me up and tell me how diamonds are a good investment, because that's a bunch of crap. No, No, I I hear you talk about that often. It it was just, it it was one of those things that I'm having trouble with the, with the amount. So I was. Well, if it was something else though, my point is it's a ratio you can afford. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you said, okay. if you told me that, that number and then you told me you make $80,000, I would be going, ah, that's a lot. Yeah. Sure. No, I understand that. Yeah. And no, uh, when we got married, it was totally different. Yeah. So that's why well, I me like too, to dude. Change Sharon's it. got a right. dead gum headlight on her finger, but she started out with a point two three. You can't even <laughs> see the little speck she started with. Not a headlight, Dave. <laughs> I like yep, that. My wife's rolling a very similar ring. So, yeah. Yep. So, okay. Well, thank you. I, hey, I appreciate it. You've done well, sir. Congratulations. And the whole idea that you're actually asking the question yourself the question yeah. not us but you're asking your you're gauging it against something and anthony i think it's real important you've worked with uh lots of wealthy people and so have i yeah that it's all about a ratio yes yeah and does it you know if you just put that amount of money in the middle of the table and burned it with a match mm-hmm. Does it ruin your life? Does it affect your life substantially? Well, that's the question to ask. And uh, if it doesn't, then it's an okay consumption ratio. If it does, then you don't do it. Absolutely. And with that, I mean, he's been married for 15 years. So I'm pretty sure his wife, she's worth that investment. Yeah, she earned it. Yes. She put up with him. <laughs> I didn't want to say she deserves it because I don't want her to be like, I deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> she put up with him. Hey, listen. Uh, that's why Sharon gets whatever Sharon wants. I was I'm about to saying. say the same thing. If my wife can take take and deal with me for 15 years, she I'm deserves dropping. a lot. Yes. Dave, I mean, wait, whoa, a whoa, whoa. lot. Whoa, 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 Dave. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down. We just got to get you started. <laughs> we got to get you started, though. Whoa, 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 Dave. I'm, I'm working on that, man. I'm, I'm working on that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's uh, the, the but the thing is, it is it's always a good thing to give you pause and think about what you're going to consume. Yes. yes, giving you don't have to think quite as much about because you can't right. really mess generosity up. You want to be wise with it. Yes, but um, you know, investing yeah. the uh, how much can can you invest too much? Yeah, no, <laughs> you really can't. You know, but you don't have to think about the amount as much. But when you're consuming it using it for personal gain, personal enjoyment, then you have to need to think about it. And that's a good spiritual exercise. Love it. Very well done. Very well done. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books.
is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Anthony O'Neill, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author of Debt-Free Degree, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888 so coming into uh, the opener, Anthony and I were having an off-air discussion that I think we probably need to bring up for everyone else. It's a good uh, – I, I didn't realize it. James, my producer, had sent me an article from Forbes. I was reading at the break at the top of the hour. And um, that, that Biden had said uh, – President Biden had said in a town hall uh, earlier in the week that he will not forgive student loan debt with an executive order. Yep. He doesn't think that that is constitutional and correct. Yep. A little bit shocking. Very. Um, I'm personally happy to hear that. Yeah. Um, but that means it puts it on Congress to pass. Yeah, we, and uh, and he said he won't support the $50,000 forgiveness, yes. only the $10,000 version. Yes. But the 50000 AOC and Elizabeth Warren are asking for. It's a $650 billion price tag. Now, let's keep that in Let's take this out. All right. So there's 1.7 trillion. Yep. In student loan debt. And that so that will leave about a trillion. Yes. If you forgave 650. We still have a crisis. Still have a crisis. Still have a problem. Yep. And as I've said many times, it is intellectually dishonest to forgive student loans while you're still making them. <laughs> if they're yeah. so bad yeah. and people are getting destroyed by the student loans and we have to come to your rescue, you poor little people, and Washington's going to be there for you and we're going to help you out. Yeah, if man. that's the case, then you need to stop making the loans. Stop doing that. And then also, too, Dave, and this may sound selfish, but I worked my behind off to pay off my student loans. It may not have been a lot, uh, but it was still $10,000. So and where's your money? Where's mine? Exactly. You know, I worked hard, and it's not just me. I'm pretty sure we have millions of people listening right now like, hey, I paid off 25000 a 100000 You know, where's my money? So... You know, this is interesting. We already know the Republican Party is not going. They will not forgive the loans. And then there are some Democrats who are like, I don't know neither. Yeah, because they're going to have people like you. They're going, ah, uh, hello. Exactly. I'm going to be mad at you be because upset. I want my money back. Exactly. You know. You know, and so, yeah, I think the, um, the, the, the I don't know if they got the votes to do it in Congress. I, I don't. I you don't know what? It. This may be a political move on President Biden's part. Ooh. Because if he does it, he takes all the heat. Yeah. If he puts it off on Congress, Congress and then they don't do it or they do do it, they get the heat. Yep. And it's not on him. They get the heat from the left. If they don't do it, they get yep. the heat from the everybody that paid off their loans yep. and want my money back if they smart do do it. And so, yeah, He's that's what, smart. that may be political cover. That might be real good strategy on his part. Because if it does go through, then he can say he has something to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he didn't feel like it was constant constitutional to do it with an executive order right. and i'm I, I, I was shocked though dave when he I came know. back and said that i'm not going to do fifty thousand. yeah pounds. i i was shocked when i read the article i said oh oh okay so all yeah right yeah all right so aoc's not in the white house after all <laughs> you know, that's what it comes down to wow very uh, interesting it's very, very interesting very. it's not it's not just political it is financial it is economic and there's an issue of, uh, you know, you have to, if you're going to be sincere. Yeah. And I don't disagree that student loans are a huge problem. Yeah, yeah. And, you and, and I are working diligently to help people to with their that. student loans. Yeah, yeah. And, and here's my but thing, If though. they're a huge problem, quit making them. And that's my thing. Before we talk about forgiving, if that is a conversation, let's, stop, let's talk about how do we stop it from even happening in the future. Yeah. Once we fix that problem moving forward, then let's come up with a game plan of how we can help the ones who we've uh, talked, in, talked them into doing something stupid. But until then, 
Why? Because we'll be right back at 1.7 trillion if we forgive this amount within the next five to ten years. Well, you're going well, and you're gonna have to do it again. Exactly. Because you didn't you didn't fix the problem. Exactly. You just yeah. you just treated the symptom. Yeah. No. 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 We the need to symptom stop. is a bunch of people up to their eyeballs and can't breathe. We have to. The stop. problem is making of student loan debt. We have to stop. And it's out of control. And it's too high. And it's too much. Yeah. It's gone on too long. Right. And it's just gotten to be where it's ridiculous. Yeah. And, um, but it's very interesting. I, you know, I know I'm really old <laughs> at times when I see things happen in our world that I never thought I would live to see mm. dot, dot, dot happen. It sounds like my grandpa used to say, I never thought I'd live to see the day that was going to happen. I'm that guy now. I'm that guy going, I never thought I'd live to see the day that they'd actually consider this crap. You know, that's yeah. what they're And they are really considering, really considering it. it. I yeah. mean, I've said on this show, it'll never happen. Right. It just shows what I know. Right. Nothing. I don't know nothing. Nah, Dave. But know. I mean, really, I never, I never dreamed that the political climate would get so far left and so far towards socialism the government providing all your goodies that they would actually be seriously considering doing this. And then it looked like it was a done deal. Right. And now it's not again. Right. So it's very interesting. Right. So the moral of the story folks is this Anthony and I, the Ramsey personalities of the Ramsey organization have committed our lives to helping you believe and understand the truth about how life works, which will cause you, based on those beliefs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you will act on those beliefs, it will lead you towards abundance. Yeah. If you act on the beliefs that Ken Coleman teaches you about careers, it's going to lead you into a better career. Yes. If you act on the beliefs that John, Dr. John Deloney shares you with you about mental health, it will lead you to a more mentally healthy situation. Absolutely. Um, I'm really enjoying his podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if you believe these things, yeah. it will cause your actions to occur. Yeah. If you believe that the government is going to take care of you, oh. it causes you oh. to not go cause to, to take personal responsibility for your life, which is a key. Yes. For you to become a, to live abundantly. Absolutely. To live in wealth. Yeah. And to live a good life. You have to take responsibility for your marriage. No one's going to fix it for you. You have to take responsibility for your freaking kids. Yeah. Nobody's going to fix them for you. Yeah. You know, God help the people that are in classrooms today because some of you are piss poor parents and you send wild animals into these classrooms and expect these teachers to manage them. I mean, it's ridiculous. Dave's going in. You know, I mean, because it, but it's not bringing abundance, right? It's not. It's not. Dave. And it's, you know, and you know, I was with a lady the other day that works with teachers. She she uh, is a friend of ours that, that is a world class expert in the education field, and she was saying, you know what helicopter parents are? Heli parents who helicopter in and fix all their kids' problems. <laughs> now they've gone beyond that. They have lawnmower parents. <laughs> I didn't know what a lawnmower parent is. A lawnmower parent cuts the grass out in front of the child so they have an easy path. Oh, man. That's different than helicoptering. This is They're cutting the grass ahead of them so they don't even have to walk on tall grass. I mean, it's just out of control. See, this is none of this personal responsibility is going to lead you to the greatest dignity and the greatest abundance in your life. Don't wait on anyone else to fix your life. Yeah. It's your job. That's it, Dave. Folks, it's an honor to tell you about the Army National Guard. Not only are they big supporters of our high school curriculum, but they also give you the opportunity to impact your local communities. Whether your goals are to get an education, serve your country, or have a better life, the Army National Guard can help you get there. Plus, they offer unbelievable financial benefits. Secure your future today. Visit nationalguard.com slash Ramsey to find out more.
Here at Ramsey Solutions, we want to transform so many lives that disruption spreads like wildfire across this country. Imagine a world where it's weird to have a student loan because everyone's assuming the best way to get an education is to pay for it. Imagine a world where the majority of people pay cash for their cars, where the credit card is the cigarette of the financial industry, where you know how to handle marriage, you know how to handle parenting. you got a career that has meaning. At Ramsey Solutions, this is why we have a 1,000 people in our, fo- in our company to create digital products and services, events and books, to transform your life. This is the goal we have to disrupt, to do it at such a scale that we disrupt the toxic culture in America. So many people have just completely lost their way. If you want to join us on that crusade, we're currently on the hunt for software engineers, Ruby on Rails, Java, C Sharp, Front End Tech, not Tech. If you're a UX designer, an SEO, content marketing specialist, we'd love to talk to you. We're on schedule to hire 360 people in the year 2021, and a lot of them in the digital space. If you're a senior level developer, we actually go home at night. We don't work you 80 hours. You actually go home and be with your family. And when you're writing code or you're showing somebody how to write code or you're writing a piece of content or you're doing a piece of creative It's always being used to change someone's life. It's work that matters. If you want to find out about the jobs we've got available, go to DaveRamsey.com. Click on Dave's Hiring on the right-hand tab. And I will tell you, it's very tough to get a job here. Sure is. It's easier to get on with the freaking FBI. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want crazy people in this building. We want people in this building that care deeply. They're good at what they do. That are people of high character, high moral fiber. Because that's who I want to work beside every day. I don't want to work beside sleazies and crazies. Yes. In a lot of places, you have to. Here, you don't have to. It's a group of very smart people of high character that work their tail ends off, and then they go home. Yeah. And we don't work 80 hours a week. Facts. We go home. And so if you're interested in that... The interview process is difficult. I'll just tell you in advance. <laughs> it's um, yeah. there's a guy sitting out here that just got hired to start some Monday. He's moving stuff into his a third floor apartment. We just met his buddies who moved him in. That's good friends right there. Yeah. Move you into your third floor, man. And uh, but he's just been through the interview process and he's just shaking his head like, yeah, 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 it's enough already. And you know what though, Dave, I appreciate our interview process because it even helps me to know if if this is a good fit. You know, so I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I was on a pod taping a podcast with a friend of mine a while ago and she said, um, you know, you guys are freaky over there. And I went, yes, we are. <laughs> and she goes, I mean, like, you know, what, do, how many times do people just stand up and walk out of the interview and go peace out? And I said, oh, oh they do sometimes. Oh, yeah. Because we are freaky. Yeah. I mean, we don't we don't really right. want to work with crazy, crazy people. people. No, sir. I, I, you know, I don't want the ladies in this place to be worried about sleazy, sleazy guys. Mm-mm. You know, it needs to be safe here. Mm-hmm. And if you can't be that guy, then you don't need to be in here. Right. You know, I'll just, you know, and it's easier to find that out during the interview mm-hmm. than it is to make you move across the country. And then I got to fire your butt because you're sleazy. Right. You know, don't do that. Oh. And and so, yeah, it's a, it's a lot. It It, it is it's actually protecting the person because, you know, there was a point in my life uh, before I met Christ years ago as an adult that if I had interviewed at a place like this, I would have been going, you people are nutty. I'm not working there. Oh, and yeah. I would have walked out the door. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. I w- because I would not have been a fit. In, that, that's interesting. I could not have gotten a job at 22 in this place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I could have gotten a job in this place ever, but it's a good thing I own it. But, yeah, it's tough to get on. But, I mean, if you're interested, guys, and you want to do something that matters, just check Dave's hiring. We're hiring positions of all kinds. Yeah. But certainly tons and tons of digital and creative uh, positions, click Dave's Hiring at DaveRamsey.com. All right, Janice is with us in Colorado Springs. Hi, Janice. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Hi, Dave. Thanks hey. for taking my call. Sure. Um, I have just my house. Mm-hmm. And I just refinanced it uh, for a 15-year loan. Good. I want to pay extra on it. Is it best to pay 
the extra along with when I pay the regular mortgage or to pay it like every like two weeks later. Yeah. Do you do it online on their site? Yes. Do they have a, a blank on the site that says principal only, additional principal? Yes. Then it doesn't matter when you do it. Right. Okay. Because it will get credited correctly because a computer is doing it. Yeah. In the it, old it, days, it in the old the, days, uh, we used to tell you when you would mail a check. You remember? Are you old enough to remember mailing a check through the mail? Oh yes. <laughs> you mail a check through the mail for your house payment. If you were going to add a check for, uh, if you were going to add to that amount for extra principal reduction for paying off your house faster, we would tell you to send a separate check in a separate envelope because the character opening it might not be smart enough to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But the good news is the yeah. computer is smart enough to figure it out. And if it says extra principal online or additional principal or whatever, and you put it in that blank, it's going to go to principal. They really, that's not a hard piece of programming for them to do. They did that right. I promise you. Well, what my, my thing is, is does it change if I just make the house payment and then two weeks later make an additional payment, does that drop the interest rate or the, um, yeah, the interest once a month, down? once a month, whatever oh, you do in that month? month is going to affect the next month. Mm -hmm. So if you okay. do, ten, if you do 10 extra payments in a month, it's only going to affect the next month. If you do one extra payment in a month equal to those 10, then it's going to affect the interest rate the next month. Exactly the same. It's not calculated okay. daily. It's calculated monthly. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I Unfortunately, I haven't really done any of your baby steps, but like I said, I've right now I only owe on my house. I Sounds have like no, you have. They yeah. just weren't mine. They were yours. <laughs> I have no, um, my credit, I have one credit card and it's frozen because I froze it. Mm. Okay. Um, How much like money said, do you have in the bank, Janice? House. Huh? How much money do you have in the bank before you start paying this these extra money? This extra I have money? ten thousand, just a little over ten thousand dollars in my savings. I have a little over, I think it's seventy five thousand in my Roth four hundred one k. How old are you? Sixty three. Good for you. What do you make? Um, right about forty five. Yeah. You've done very well. Very. Yeah, and just continue to concentrate. I, I'd raise that emergency fund up a little bit, and I definitely want you to invest more aggressively, not just pay extra on the house. I want you to be continuing to add. I want that 75000 to go way up in the next few years, okay? Yeah. Okay. You've done really good. Well, I, You've done, I mean, she's done a lot with four, a single lady making 43. 43. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I was about to say the same thing. Wow. This is, yeah, I'm shocked. Well, that's not bad. Yeah, you're doing a great job. I'm, I'm very proud of her. Yeah, excellent job. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she's been fighting a, a tough battle probably there. Absolutely. So, okay, but the folks, so here's, like, here's the calculation. Here's the calculation. Uh, let's pretend you had, for calculation purposes, an easy number is 3% mm -hmm. on your mortgage. Okay, that's, that's a, a quarter of a percent a month. Mm -hmm. Divide 3 by 12. Okay, so how much per month is your interest? If you have 3% annually, 3 divided by 12 is a quarter of a percent. Yes. Okay, a month. That is going to be calculated on how much principal you owe at the end of that month. A quarter times point zero 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 two five. Yeah. Okay, or however many zeros zero. And so if you've reduced the principal, that next month more of your payment is going to go to principal and less to interest because your interest will be less yes. that following month with a traditional FHA, VA, or conventional mortgage. That's how it'll work.
Anthony O'Neill, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Robin is with us in Colorado Springs. Hi, Robin. How can we help? Hi, Anthony and Dave. I'm calling on behalf of my elderly parents who are in a financial pickle and need help on how to advise them. Uh, They have a $320,000 paid-for home, but no savings and no retirement, Um, a $98,000 HELOC, $11,000 in credit card debt, Mm. and their monthly income is about $4,000. Expenses are about $3,200. So my father wants to get a $125,000 mortgage to pay off all of his debts. And I know that's not what you would would advise, Dave. (laughs) So how can I help them? How how old are they? Uh, Early 80s. How's their health? It's good. My father works a part-time job Uh and earns about 1,100 a month doing that. In addition to the four, or the four is the total? The four is the total. Okay. Well, it's likely that um, you don't need a hundred and twenty thousand dollar mortgage. It looks like it's a hundred and nine. Well, yeah, yeah. That no, was a hundred and nine, isn't it? Yes. So why the other eleven? Uh, I'm not sure. Probably just a psychological cushion of some kind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and what would it, I, I would guess his payment would be less on that if he did that than the current. Yes, uh, monthly right now they're paying only on the interest on the HELOC, and it's about three twenty-five. Oh, so it would the payment would go up then? Well, right, yes. So I'm not even sure if they could afford the payment. So why does he want the payment to go up? Well, that's a good question. I don't know that he's thought about that. All right. Um, I. <sighs> This is your dad and your mom. Yes. It's not mine. Mm-hmm. Um, but mathematically, from a, uh, an actuarial table, which is what a life insurance company uses to rate probability of someone passing away, mathematically, really what we want to do here is put something in place that they can hang on. Mm-hmm. Right. It's not like we're going to turn the corner on this and they're going to move into prosperity. It's just to keep them from having to move out of their house. Right. Yes. So I guess the question is, what gives them the most room in their budget um, and keeps them from having to move out of their house? Is it remaining where we are, or is it um, getting a $110,000 mortgage? No, we're not going to borrow more. And um, so, uh, but, but I... You know, you can run the numbers both ways, but I bet that HELOC is going to be cheaper monthly. Yeah. You're not making any progress, but I'm not really trying to make progress at this stage of the game. Right. Yeah. I'm really just trying to let them stay in their home, okay, from an emotional standpoint. Because they, you know, anything we do that makes it harder for them to stay in the home seems kind of wrong, doesn't it? Yes. And it's all about cash flow at this stage of the game. So I'm probably... That HELOC may have a variable rate, and it may have a call on it, and that could be dangerous. If it has like a three-year call, and suddenly the mortgage company decides they want all their money, right? Uh, that might put them in a pinch. He might be thinking about that call, that balloon payment that's coming up on that thing, or he may be concerned interest rates will go up and price him out of the market. So I guess I would dig into it and go, okay, if we get a mortgage, exactly what is the payment going to be? If we don't get a mortgage, what's the payment going to be? That's number one. Because I want to minimize the payment, which is weird for Dave Ramsey to say, because the goal here is not really to get it paid off. The goal here is to let them stay in their home. Yeah. Because in five years, statistically, yeah. you know, we're not going to be dealing with this, right? Right. Uh, that was cold. I'm sorry. but um, I understand. But uh, it's just a math thing. It, it, it's not just a math thing. It's anything but just a math thing. But I'm trying to think, mom and dad, I want them to enjoy the last five to ten years or whatever it is by not having to move them i mean if we were trying to prosper we would move down into a house and pay cash for it if we were trying to prosper right yeah but this is just protecting their their standard of living and letting them stay there and pay the minimum payment i don't know anthony any thoughts no dave i'm right there with you Um, i tell you the use this credit cards bother me they got to cut those things up and that means they're not on a budget yeah and they haven't stopped the bleeding 
That's exactly right. Yeah. And he he's and then he's trying to borrow his way out of debt. And that also indicates he's not stopped the bleeding. And so we do need to get if we're going to go with my plan, it really is not a good plan if they're going to continue to dig the hole. Yeah. Because if he goes and gets a hundred and ten thousand dollar mortgage, hundred twenty thousand dollar mortgage, and they don't continue, they don't quit overspending, they're going to be right back here in three years, two years. That's exactly right, and I've I've tried to tell him that, but it's it's uh, hard to get that point yeah. across. Yeah. <laughs> so you know the 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 biggest thing is you have to stop the 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 the, the overspending. Spend it. You you have to if four K is four K is four K. You're not in Congress. You need to live on four K including these payments and cut the credit cards up and never use them again and get debit cards and live on a written budget with your spouse. And otherwise, dad, you need to sell the house and you need to move down in house. And that might be the cattle prod statement. Like, you know, yeah. like if you're not going to quit overspending, you're going to lose the house. Mm-hmm. But you know, because uh, you know, they're not, I don't know. How, how long, how long, over what period of time do you think they ran up that 11 K? Oh, goodness. Uh, probably just a few months. Ooh. They got this HELOC uh, not not more than maybe two years ago. Okay. He cannot and go get a new mortgage, yeah. even if it's cheaper. Because it's a pattern of him trying to borrow his way out. They keep overspending, yeah. and then they go get another loan. They overspend, then they go get another loan. And then we we go get another loan, and we go get another loan, we go get another loan. They have to stop the overspending. So I would say don't get a mortgage because it's it's the continuation of his negative pattern here. Yeah, okay. I have. I honestly have no idea where all that money went. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they're probably spending 6000 bucks a month. Yeah. And so... Now, the next question is, relationally, how are you going to get your uh, foot this far in the door? <laughs> to have the, right. Because have you're going to have to sit down and do a budget with them yep. if you're going to help them fix this. And you're going to have to point out to your mom or whoever it is that can't stay out of freaking Target that this has got to stop. <laughs> yeah, you, you've got the right person pointed out there. <laughs> Uh-oh. And dad's trying, to, dad's trying to take care of her. Dad's a Band-Aid. Yeah, yeah. He's an enabler. Right. Okay. Well, I think it'd be a great thing if, if you guys can get create a conversation where there's a budget and you're walking them through uh, putting the budget together with both of them sitting there and let her have the revelation that she's getting ready to cause them to lose their home if she doesn't stop this crap. But that doesn't come from you making that statement. It comes from you continuing to ask questions like, Mom, if you continue to do this, how do you think this is going to end? Mhm. Mm okay. If you don't stay on this budget, mom, do you realize that you're you're gonna that we're gonna run out of money? Can you see that? And let her see the actual numbers. People can feel numbers when they're sitting and looking at them in relation to what they're doing. But when she's just like over there, you know, being her four year old self at Target, then that that's it's not in context. But when you put it in context with the rest of the situation, it, it gives you a jolt. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And, and so, but again, that's not with you coming in there and shaming them. It's more you asking a bunch of questions and put a bunch of facts in front of them, and the facts will smack them upside the head. That's a counseling technique. Let the facts do the hard work, the emotional work on these on them. It's a very difficult conversation to the 80-year-old parents. It's very hard. But it, to the extent you can get involved is to the extent this is going to get fixed. It's going to get ugly if it doesn't get fixed. Wow.
Our scripture of the day, 1 Corinthians 9.24. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Teddy Roosevelt said, it is hard to fail, but it is worse never to have tried to succeed. Ronald is with us in New York City. Hi, Ronald. How are you? Hey, Dave Anthony. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? So um, me and my wife are currently face, uh, tackling debt. We're in baby step two. And we have a few expenses, big expenses, coming up in the next few months. I graduated this past May with a degree in accounting, and I started, uh, my salary is 70000 And my wife and I got married this past August, and we're expecting a baby in the next four months. Yay! Congrats, man. A lot going on, man. And the other, the other expense, uh, the other thing is uh, we don't own a car. So we live in New York City. We always went through a train. So once we have, before the baby arrives, we're looking to get a car. So I'm struggling to... Um, you have any wife, money? Uh, so I have 18000 saved up. Oh, that's good. I have 42000 in student loans. I start with 42000 and I have 31000 Mm-hmm. And my wife... Um, doesn't have any student loans. Fully, she has full scholarship, and she's currently in school. She doesn't work, so I'm the only one working currently. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how much to save up. Like, how does it work? How much to tax all the debt? How much to one save up? I'm sorry. How much debt did you say you had? Currently, thirty-one thousand. And you have eighteen thousand cash. And Correct. you have no car because you've been using no public transportation, and now with a baby, you don't want to. Yeah, so when I needed a car, my parents lived 30 minutes away by public transportation, so I would take their car. Okay, so what? Um, help me with your lifestyle situation on when you would actually utilize the car. How much would it be used? So since I'm working from home, and uh, it won't be used as much. I mean, it would mainly be used when you had the baby in the car. Correct. And where would you correct. be taking said baby? <laughs> Either to, to a doctor's or I've been told by a few friends that you, can, you go on to a doctor's a few times. And also, usually we go out for the weekend by family. In okay, so it might be driven five times a month. Yeah. Grocery shopping. I'll use it at night. At night, I'll be using it more. Yeah, but you but don't for, have to have it for that. Sure. You were going at nights to go on public transportation if it's you. Correct. So the actual need for the car is about five trips a month. Mm-hmm. Correct. Around that. Around that. Around. Yeah. Because of the baby. Correct. Yeah. Otherwise, and you were doing the, fine the, without the, the it Uber. because most lots of people in New York City do not own cars. It's not that unusual at all. I know several people don't even have a driver's license that right. live there. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. So, you know, what I'm going to buy is a minimal car that's going to start when I need it to start. But it doesn't really need to be that much. About five thousand bucks. Absolutely, and five thousand is generous. I was going to say about thirty five hundred. Uh huh. And then when baby comes, you need to get the rest of that money towards the debt, yeah. Yeah. and let's get this debt cleared up. Yeah. So, what's the uh, recommended amount that you guys say when it comes to when you're expecting a baby to save up? All you can. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you can. Yeah, and so, but you're you're in an unusual situation. Part of you having a baby is you need this car. Yes. And so, yeah, but- I would take five of the eighteen and or less and buy a car, mm-hmm. uh, a, a reliable um, minivan or four door car of some kind, whatever yes. you want to get. And uh, you can get a lot of car for five thousand if you'll shop carefully. Uh, where are you going to park this thing? So I don't really live in New York City. But I live in Brooklyn. Okay. So it's much more easier compared to New York City. Yes. Yes. That's <laughs> gonna because I mean a stinking parking spot in the city can in Manhattan can be more than an apartment. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's good. So five thousand dollars, man. That that's your that's your max. Yeah. Okay. What that if you spend more than that? Let me tell you what you did. You used your baby as an excuse to buy a car you wanted. Yes. Because your so need little, for this I, car is five trips a month. That's your actual need. And I really see it up to 15, 18,000. 
for a car. And so me and my wife decided after listening to we just started listening to you. To go and, towards uh, your debt, right? Correct. Okay. After yeah. the baby comes. Yes. So I'd buy a car for 5000 I'd leave the 13 sitting there. I'd pile up as much as I can pile up on top of that. And then when baby comes, I would take it down to 1000 bucks and start your baby steps and attack that debt. Yeah. And then let's get the rest of that 30000 bucks. It'll be about fifteen at that point cleaned off and uh, as fast as you can get it cleaned off. And then once that's cleaned off, you build your emergency fund, you're working your baby steps. But, yeah, I get the car. I get the car purchase, and I, I'm not, you know, but just don't use this as an excuse to buy an $18,000 car, which is what you were about to do, you said earlier, and then you stumbled into the YouTube or, or podcast world or something, and uh, and we interrupted your plan. <laughs> so it, it, it is a different um, uh, world where there's that kind of public transportation and where it's quite the norm. Yes, it is. Uh, versus most major cities in America, you wouldn't even be having this conversation. Yeah, you would need a car. But New York, nah. Yeah, nah. but uh, but that, that's uh, very interesting. $18,000 at his age. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with him. Brittany's in Houston. Hi, Brittany. How can we help? Hi, David Anthony. Thank you guys for taking my call. Sure. Um, my husband and I have a fully funded six-month emergency fund, and we have no debt except for our mortgage, which okay. we still owe. 86000 on. Okay. Um, we are saving 15% of our income to retirement. Okay. And right now we're working on paying our house off early. Okay. Um, I was actually just offered a new job in a new city that's out of state. But it's a temporary position with the fellowship, so it's two to three years. And so we only plan on renting while we're there, not buying a house or anything. Um, we really don't know where we'll end up after that two to three year period. Mm -hmm. And so my question is whether really what we should do with our current house, whether we should keep it and rent it out, which based off of comps in the area would be about 1800 a month, or if we should sell it and pocket the money and, uh, you know, invest that. What's and your fellowship in? Uh, it's in um, molecular virology. Say one more time. Uh, um, uh, virology, so I study viruses. Okay, all right. And so obviously you're a medical doctor, yeah. Uh, PhD. Or PhD. Doctor. Okay, doctor. so you're doing yeah. research. It's research yeah. fellowship. Okay, yeah. good. Good for you. And there's no for sure chance you're coming back to your no, current city. No, not yeah. a chance. Yeah. Not when she finishes that. Nope. You're going to be super valuable. Mm -hmm. um, right. I think you need to concentrate 100% on the fellowship, not on being a landlord. Yeah. Okay. I think your your focus should be singular. Mm -hmm. uh, this okay. is an important opportunity for you. It's beyond important, and it's a beyond. It's actually quite an honor as well. Yeah. It's you obviously have an incredible intellect, and uh, so yeah. I I don't want this distraction of some idiot changing his Harley oil in your living room back in Houston <laughs> while you're on the other side of the country, trying, uh, to, trying to trying to work on saving the world yeah. from viruses. And um, so, no, uh, I think we need you focusing on your fellowship. All of us do. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree there. So, yeah, I, I would sell it if I were in your shoes. You'll get a plenty nice house when you do make the final location that you're going to land in. Yeah, that's um, long distance landlording. Bad plan. I wouldn't do it. Not even considering it. Yeah. Not even. Good stuff. But thank you for what you're doing, though. We, we Absolutely. Need, we, need, we need more of you. Absolutely. And good analysis on, hey, we're only going to be there for a couple of years, so we're going to rent there. That's a yes. good, that was a good decision already, like having yeah. already made that going in. Now, will, that, will she be able to stay stable, though, when she finds that oh, land yeah. spot? Yeah, when she finishes that, that's going to just increase her value okay. in the marketplace yeah. dramatically. Wow. Yeah, pretty impressive. Whew. Good stuff. That puts this hour in the books. Thanks, Anthony O'Neill, James Childs, and Kelly Daniel in the booth. I am Dave Ramsey. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there is ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus.